When you open up Microsoft Excel from the Microsoft Office products on your computer, you'll be brought to this, the Microsoft Excel screen. Let's identify some of the components of the screen. First of all, we'll identify the pointer or the cursor. Now you notice that as it's located in the middle of the screen, it has a big plus sign and that's the shape it'll take while it's on this portion of the screen. But as we move it through other parts of the screen, it takes on different forms. And you'll notice it'll take on different forms, allowing us to perform different tasks. The way in which a spreadsheet is laid out, just the grid in the middle is the main body where we'll be doing all of our work. The columns are labeled by the individual letters of the alphabet. And you'll see along the side, each row is given a different number. Now what we see here are cells A1 all the way through over to cell L17, but this is not the limits that we have. As we move around within the spreadsheet, and I'm just going to use the arrow keys here on my keypad, you'll notice that we can move to the right and uncover multiple columns that are available for us to use. The same way we can move our cursor down by using the down arrow key, we'll see there are numerous rows that we can use. Let's go back to the beginning of our spreadsheet, however, and identify some other components of the screen we have before us. You'll notice that we have tabs that are listed towards the top of the screen, and each tab, as we'll click on them, has a ribbon. And on the ribbon is nothing more than a set of related functions or procedures that we will perform. Now some of these tabs we'll use more often than others. For example, we will always use the Home tab, occasionally the Insert tab, as well as the Page Layout tab. We may use some of the other tabs for certain procedures. And then the File tab here is where we have commands that relate to the major file operations. One other thing to point out that's going to be really important for you as you do all your work in Excel is the undo button. What the undo button will allow you to do as in most Microsoft products, it will allow you to undo the previous command. And we'll make a lot of mistakes, so we'll use that button an awful lot. In addition to moving around the spreadsheet by using the arrows on your keyboard, we can also just use the mouse move the cursor to a certain cell we want to work in, and then use the left mouse button and left click on that cell. You'll notice now it has the black box around it indicating that it is the active cell. So whatever procedure we perform, whatever information we type will be added to that cell itself. Another way to move around large spreadsheets will be using the scroll bars that we have to the right and to the bottom of our screen. Now you'll notice that when we look at a Microsoft Office Excel spreadsheet, what we have is one sheet before us, but there are tabs down here that indicate sheet two and sheet three. Imagine that these are three sheets of paper. One is stacked upon the other. In order to go from one sheet to another, all we need to do is then click on the tab of the bottom. And you notice I already have information included here on sheet two and as well on sheet three. Now in the event that you need more sheets added to your workbook, this button here off of the tab off to the right of sheet three is what we'll click to add another sheet. So I'll click it once and it, you see it adds sheet four. I'll click it twice and it adds sheet five. We can add a large number of sheets to any one given workbook. Let's go back to sheet two. Now one of the things when you have multiple sheets, you may want to identify them by name so you know exactly what information is contained. What I've begun to do here is create a hypothetical grade worksheet for the fall 2012 classes that I might teach. In that case, instead of just having the label of the sheet to be sheet two, I want to perhaps give it the label of the course number for which this information is included. In that case, all I'm going to do is move the cursor so it's on top of Sheet 2 tab. Double left mouse click, you notice it highlights the entire Sheet 2 label there. And now I'll type in POLS 340. 
and what I've done there is nothing more than change the name of that sheet to POLS 340. Now I'll click on sheet 3 you notice this is the information for POLS or political science 101. Again moving the cursor so it's on top of the sheet 3 label I will double click and just type in POLS 101 and now it's easy to see exactly which sheet which tab has the information I wish want for each course one of the things you may find though that once you include multiple sheets within a given workbook you may want to put them in a certain order let's say for instance I want to put these two worksheets in the order of the course number so I want pol uh, political science 101 to be the very first worksheet the way in which you move move worksheets around within a workbook is nothing more than click your move your cursor to the tab for polls 101 I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and then move the cursor move the mouse to the left so it's in front of sheet number one I'll release then that left mouse button and now it has placed polls 101 as the very first worksheet let's say I want to do the same thing for political science 340 again move the cursor so it's on top of the label polls 340 hold down the left mouse button and move the mouse over until we now see that that little black triangle or arrow is now between the polls 101 tab and the sheet 1 tab and now I've moved my sheets around and I can again go back and make polls 101 that worksheet to be the active one that I'm working on right now.